What we need to do first is simply develop a map and a general agreement of where transmission needs to exist in order for us to get our clean energy goals. And then we need to take on the next step, which is, okay, how are we going to actually build that grid? The very good news is that people who are in the right places are really coming together to look at transmission. We need to think about ways to plan systems between regions a bit better because we haven't really developed much inter-regional transmission at all. And it's, it requires that kind of long distance sharing of resources to truly provide a grid that will be decarbonized, but also as reliable and resilient as we've come to expect it to be. So the U.S. then breaks up this system into interconnection zones. In ours, it's the Western Electricity Coordinating Council, the WEC. The system where you've got utility generators and independent power producers, numerous transmission grids in the Northwest, balancing authorities to make all sure this thing works correctly. And then you can see how this system gets really complicated really fast with a lot of players in it. To deal with all that, we've created some markets and we've created some organizations that will help us organize that and create that reliability that helps keep our lights on all the time. These organizations that manage the day-to-day -day flow of energy within a large system are called independent system operators, or ISOs, or a regional transmission organization, or RTO. They're responsible for optimizing the dispatch of all of these different resources on the transmission system to get to a not only reliable system, but the lowest cost system. In the Northwest, we still have an organized system, but it's not operated by a central entity. We have like 30 different utilities or balancing authorities that are all doing their own thing within their transmission system and balancing their own needs. So the system actually has worked great for decades and it's worked very reasonably well and, and we have some of the lowest rates in the country and it's kept the lights on, it's very, been very reliable. But numerous studies have shown that an RTO in the Northwest would, through that efficiency and optimization, actually save us billions of dollars. Also, what an RTO does, it's an organized transmission system that can figure out where the transmission needs to go, and it's authorized to build it and pay for it. And right now, it's very difficult to do that because it's two or three entities get together and decide to build this one. And so an RTO entity could potentially help do that in a much more efficient, effective, and faster way. Pacific Corp is not opposed to such an arrangement, assuming it's done correctly. Utilities originally built the transmission systems that they own and operate, principally to serve customers in their service areas. When you're talking about creating a separate entity to operate that system, ownership and control are big issues. We've been talking about this for 30 years. The issue isn't a financial one, but a political one. So in order to have an RTO created in the Northwest, all of these separate 30 or so independent entities would have to give up their authority and their control to this independent system operator. And there will be winners and losers in that. So recently, the Northwest states have got together with California and created the Westwide Governance Pathways Initiative kind of a mouthful. But basically what it is, is a way of thinking about how do you do this governance of this RTO in the Northwest, including California? And how do we prevent California from dominating it because they're such a big player? And so that's been a recent change in the way this conversation is going. Need to stay tuned on how that act actually is going to play out. But that's a big, big change.